Hello friends, I am Dr. Kamlesh Mehta from Mumbai. My heartiest congratulations to Dr. Pradeep Gupta for arranging such wonderful opportunity whereby all the doctors from various zones of the country and also from abroad are coming together and sharing on one topic. At the same time, he has taken up the task of integrating various views which he is collecting from different zones. Here, I will be sharing some of my views on the topic whereby I will start my presentation hereby. I am sharing my studies of homeopathic treatment to understand approach in resolving acute flu-like diseases in times of threatened epidemic of the time which you are passing through. Then this study is since last four weeks till 9th April 2020. This is a pilot project which I have taken up to understand homeopathic perspective with regards to flu-like conditions, especially when we are threatened with the epidemic of coronavirus. My this study I am dedicating to Dr. Samuel Hanneman today on 10th April 2020 on World Homeopathy Day on his birthday and I wish you all happy homeopathy world day. I proceed further that in medical world so far what we were considering virus as innocent and self-limiting so what we were doing we were not paying much of the attention. Medical fraternity never paid much of the attention to it unless they were confronted with the drug, diseases like dengue and swine flu, whereby they spread very rampantly at the same time. They started affecting the lives of the people. And then antiviral treatment, at the same time, vaccines, everything started developing. And we have started considering virus for our attention. And in that, currently, we are now at the verge of epidemic. And so, this coronavirus, COVID-19, is making us alert not to discount viruses and study them intently. So here is the pilot study. Now, because of the behavior of the virus, of the self-limiting, they are never paid attention for treatment or given symptomatic treatment, or they are always kept for the observation. It is said that wait for seven days or treat in just one week with medical treatment. And in such scenario, what Hanneman has told us, that is even then today relevant to the condition where we are threatened with the pandemic. Aim and objective of this present of this study is to study homeopathic treatment of flu-like acute diseases to understand its approach in resolving it, especially when epidemic of COVID-19 is a big threat. So here, our aim is to study the acute disease, which is like flu. 
and we understand the approach in resolving it, especially in such a severe situation. So in objectives, we don't move from the fundamentals of homeopathy and whereby we have to focus on the exciting cause, prodrome and anamnesis. Understand its importance in treatment of acute conditions like a flu-like situation and we have to specially find out what is the role of disposition because when patient comes to us we don't know it is in which phase or the stage of the disease when characteristics are not available even it is possible that we can approach them so the methods are uh, followed uh, whereby uh, without uh, being prejudiced the cases which have come to me and I have studied and uh, I received uh, 20 cases in this one month which were having a flu-like symptoms and they came uh, from about 10 kilometer radius from my clinic and uh, two cases one from Abu Dhabi and another from 250 kilometers away from me that is Surat <clears throat> so these cases of belongs to the they are from the age group of the infancy to 100 years of age of both the gender and they were accepted for the study now we understand that uh, every uh, viral disease like they have symptoms like flu in the beginning phase till the localization take place and what are the symptoms respiratory system affected fever weakness uneasiness malaise body loss of appetite these are the most common along with chilliness and change in the mood and other symptoms so uh, when we are focusing on the flu-like conditions we have to understand that uh, initially when the sickness begin before the sickness it is in the incubation period and then we start getting symptoms and once the symptom proceed and gradually we understand which is the system of affection of this virus and that is how we understand or oh, this is hepatitis or this is corona or this is influenza or this chikungunya so the sphere of action takes time when the disease evolves so before that if you are getting the case then as Hanuman has said that homeopathy can treat the disease much prior to its diagnosis is established because we follow very important point that is deviation deviation is connecting to the origin of the disease and deviation also tells us what is to be restored and that picture is very clear that now after the deviation what are the changes that has taken place in the person and in the disposition so these are the earliest feature before the pathognomic symptoms have established. So this earliest picture during the incubation period, whatever prodromal symptoms they come up, start emerging during this period and then it goes into the disease proper and which further travels to the establishment in particular tissues so earlier the patient comes better that we can avoid it and that is the importance of prodrome that is what anyone has said anyone has given importance to one is the prodrome and second is in between two attacks whatever is the state of the patient we have to consider because this prodrome as well as 
in between two attacks, what are is the symptomatology? They belong to the individual, not to the pathology of the person. So that is why we follow that. Here, uh, cellular pathogenesis evolves, it damages the cells, we'll not go into the intricacies of it, but what is most important is the indirect cell damage can result from integration of the viral genome, induction of mutation in the host genome, inflammation and host immune response. So ultimately, this entire game is what is the tendency of the person, propensity of the person, that is susceptibility or disposition. At the other end, what is the state of the immunity, the defense mechanism, how takes care about it, and then third is when the fight is going on, what is the strength remaining to express the cry, the express the characteristics that one throws about the individual defense system. Now, this defense system, we know, it is of two types, humoral and cell-mediated. Humoral is offering us the general response because it is a general immunity, lymphatic immunity. It is not the immunity which is within the cell, but outside the cell. So here it gives a general response like fever, weakness, malaise, because these are the things which are required for the defense. The other one is cell-mediated immunity. So the uh, 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 totality at the particular level, tissue level, is available from the cell-mediated immunity. Now, significance of the prodrome, which I told, all the viral diseases are observed to have almost similar group of prodrome symptoms as approaching sickness in form of symptoms like weakness, malaise, change in appetite, taste, preference of food, taste, change in thermal sensitivity, etc. But these symptoms vary in patients. It means the symptoms we find Every, in every patient, they are different in the prodromal space, and that is the individuality of the patient. And this period is usually overlooked by non homeopaths because they don't have anything to deal with this except the symptomatic treatment. So they just say, oh, this is a malaise, this is a weakness, just take care, take fluid, etc. But there is no other support system. Now, the characteristic symptoms at such stage can help in deciding remedy to avoid for coming disease much before its diagnosis. That is why in my study of this 20 case, I paid attention to prodrome, anamnesis, and deviation. So that at the earliest, whatever picture I graph, I can prescribe. These 20 cases which uh, I got were already under my treatment. So that was one benefit I had. Second benefit was that because of the anxiety and the fear of this epidemic, as soon as they got the symptoms, the earliest possible they approached me. So I had this dual benefit, and the third benefit is, as soon as the deviation took place, they approached. So the symptoms of the deviation were very fresh for with them. So this situation helped me. And while approaching such cases, what I had to bear in mind, there is one thing, that uh, exciting phase, I have to consider because this viral flu-like condition 
is a, a falls into the acute disease of Hahnemann and classification of disease. So, it is a explosion of the latent sora. It means the state was dormant and the exciting factor awakened it. It means the condition was at the level of the diathesis. And based on the person's vulnerability, propensity or the tendency, he would respond. Second point was that uh, while considering this exciting course, it was also necessary to bear in mind that what is the cost that is paid by the host in terms of the pathology, the process that is taking place, the damage to the tissue, the speed, the pattern, and that will help me to emerge the picture and decide the remedy. So this is something very important that in the, in the initial phase when uh, disease no, is not evolved completely well, then the how it progresses, what is the pace, what pattern it is taking up, that itself helps to individualize the patient at the same time. This is coming from the tendency, the person himself, and that is why it gives or helps me to understand the holistic approach. Keeping this in mind, little bit about the idea about acute disease when I kept in mind that diseases are individual, sporadic, or they are epidemic. Now, currently the situation is not the individual, or it is not uh, purely that uh, a group of people in different pockets. Now, it is in between the sporadic and epidemic. Then it can, any time can fulminate and more masses can get affected by this. It can also go further, whereby acute myism become active and Unlike smallpox and one-time conditions, coronavirus or flu-like conditions can become recurrent acute myasthenia. Okay. This is something important, very important, that when I am treating flu-like conditions, I have to be very, very careful that by any chance if I suppress the condition, then it can have two situations. It can go back to the normal dormant state or it does not go to the dormant state. It remains active, but since it is suppressed, it continues its activity further and leads the condition, the process, to the chronicity because here now myism is activated. So here everything will depend upon this vulnerability will depend upon the fundamental cause and other factors which are stated in aphorism number five like ascertainable constitutional features or habit, habitat, sexual functions, relations, occupation. So all various features we have to take into the account. Now, in the review of literature, the study stated that conditions like autoimmune disorder, asthma, they were triggered mainly by the unresolved viral conditions. And this is a study by the modern medicine scientists. Isn't this 
coinciding with Hanumanian thinking, whereby uh, this scientist never met Hanuman. So Hanuman established this centuries before the centuries that if latent myism, the acute disease is not resolved or satisfied, it can become the cause for process of a chronic disease. And the same thing, it is written here. So chronic disease like immune disorder, bronchial asthma are triggered, triggered by such viral unresolved infections in predisposed patients, in the vulnerable patients. So this is something very important whereby the theory or the understanding of predisposition which anyone has put forward, disposition which has put forward, diathesis is put forward and then disease at the final result. So it is the total process of predisposition, disposition, diathesis and disease. This particular aspect I had to keep in mind during this particular pilot study. These are the observations which I share with you. This is the group of, uh, I had a patient in front at the same time of the 100 years old patient. Now, uh, female were more than the male. 15 female and 5 male and the symptoms interestingly just see here the symptom that is highest affected symptom that was cough so respiratory symptoms throat pain cough rhinitis they are more prominent and the general symptoms fever weakness and altered mood these are the other general symptoms, they were seen prominently in my study of the 20 cases. I also found that two of the cases had hypertension, one had diabetes, one had a renal disease, one was uh, asthmatic and also patient had hypothyroid. So, uh, these are the risk factors when we are treating conditions like viral diseases. So viral diseases can create a fulminating situation and especially if there are vital organs or the chronic pathology is already going on, system is paying cost, so immunity is diminished and threshold is less. So diabetes, hypertension, renal conditions, we have to always keep in mind when we are treating the diseases. Onset and progress, here we find there was sudden onset and in the majority of the cases, they were found having a rapid progress. Uh, exciting factors, five patients were uh, had a contacts from the people coming from such vulnerable area like Dubai and in uh, two cases they were exposed to suspected COVID-19 case who had expired. Otherwise, uh, uh, exposed to cold food, cold temperature, environment, or the physiological stress like dentition. So, uh, whereby immunity can reduce, such conditions become active. Characteristic symptoms were found be besides the ailments symptom. Severity, if you see again, respiratory system is more severe than other system. 
or other general symptoms and in other general symptoms again weakness fever and mood alterations they are at the higher side besides the general of the appetite and body pain and congestion remedies which came across in this 20 cases if i see it is having the multiple different remedies that came up it is a full uh, range of the remedies there were uh, uh, one solanaceae uh, family if i can say there were belladonna mandragora and stramonium the, those patients were affected these all cases were already under the homeopathic treatment with me so i knew the remedies and the response they had given now stramonium uh, two uh, uh, patients tuberculinum two patients and xerophyllum two patients rest all remedies one patients so remedies are belladonna mandragora stramonium calcare silicata natrum silicata sulfur antimony sulf calcare mure strontium carb caliphos aluminum mure argenticum nitricum tuberculinum boinum nux vomica xerophyllum antimony mure <clears throat> so there is no consistency and this make me to understand that individuality has to be respected individuality has to be ascertained and case has to be seen in its holistic aspect for deciding a remedy and we should not be prejudiced with any particular remedy and fit remedy in the patient dose repetition uh we i re require to repeat the doses single doses only six cases whereas seven cases infrequent repetition and seven repeat uh, cases more frequent repetition in five cases i had to change the potency and in two cases i had to change the medicine and interestingly the medicine where i had to change whereby in that one case from the local totality antimony hours was prescribed but antimony hours relieved symptoms to some uh, of the cough to some extent but produced lot of itching all around and so antimony hours had to be withdrawn patient was observed for some time and then patient was given original dispositional remedy which was helping the patient there was calcarea causticum and that helped the patient very much so medicine had to be changed because of this reason and in another case sulfur was given to the child the infant sulfur had helped the child earlier but now sulfur did not help it refuses to help with terms of the high fever 100 to 103 degree temperature very cranky child in between becoming very sleepy and the tongue was coated and dehydrated and she started the vomiting and purging which was offensive and in this point of time antimony self came into the picture and took hold of the case and relieved the patient but required frequent doses so here we find that 14 cases in 75% of the cases were restored uh five cases are under observation they are recovering they are definitely doing good but some of the symptoms with little intensity are persisting and one case there is a recurrence of uh, fear, uh, 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 mental symptoms uh, much of the in that child the symptoms has come up with a uh, lot of irritability 
So I come to the conclusion. And the conclusion is that that 90% uh, of the cases restored with their previously indicated dispositional remedy. Now we can get uh, uh, patients either who are already under the treatment or the fresh case. But if the case is a fresh, then we have to pay attention to the deviation, evolution, that is anamnesis, prodrome, pace, pattern of the disease along with dispositional features and mind. Obviously, characteristic symptoms we'll be looking into at the general, at disposition, and at the mind. So, if that is with the new cases, but if your previous cases coming to you, then make sure that before changing the remedy, you match with the remedy which you trusted earlier and which gave the result. So, in 90% of the cases, it was successful and it restored. If case is fresh, then I already told you what to do. As the cases had approached in the earliest phase, it was possible to prescribe and abort the rest of the condition. So the results were quite encouraging, rapid, and they did not continue with the further complication. Exciting factors will be there. You will find cold or you will find uh, some or other uh, food items. But we have to bear in mind that whether the disposition present at that point of time when patient is coming with the acute condition has to match with that characteristics. The result needs further correlation with more number of cases. This is a pilot study only with the 20 cases. Supported with investigations to have evidence-based results to emphasize the idea that in the earlier phase, that is in the prodrome period, homeopathic remedy to the case will help to avoid the case. Approach to every acute case must be individualistic, holistic, and homeopathic, where the highest importance will go to mind and disposition. As exciting factor will act only if patient is having vulnerability for that exciting factor. So the basic tendency is very important. This study revealed importance to dispositional remedy in prodromal phase of acute disease, but cases which are, if seemed under influence of acute myism, will demand further study. These are the references. And this is a protocol, the PORFORMA, that was uh, used for checking points in every case. So this is a checklist PORFORMA about the symptoms of the disease, about the general conditions, about causative factor, about the onset progress severity and the response. I hope my this pilot study is of some help to further direction and it will guide us for the further work. Of course, we have to integrate views of everybody who are, who are sharing their views on flu-like condition or today's challenge to the epidemic condition and we will find out some solution. And government will also come forward to take, uh, take the advantage, optimum advantage of homeopathy. Have a good day. With the best wishes, I conclude my session here. Thank you very much.